In this video, we are going to look at how to send a packet of dynamic size. However, before we do that, there are just a couple things that I'd like to change. If we go to our P result header, you'll see that I was using P not yet implemented. This is not very clear on what this means because we could have something not yet implemented and it means something completely different from this because maybe we do plan on implementing it. So I'm just going to do a find and replace. I'm going to replace not yet implemented with generic error. And I'll just do a replace all. All right, and that should uh, fix all the occurrences. So now we'll just use generic error instead of not yet implemented. And one other thing is if we go into our socket header for send, we really should be using a const uh, void pointer here because send should not be modifying the contents. And the same with send all. So let's just modify the definitions for these. Change that to const. And then for send all, change that to const. Let's go back to our client source.cpp and look at where we are sending our buffer. So we're creating a char buffer of size 256. And then every single iteration, we're just trying to send this to the server. Now, what if we wanted to send a string that was not size 256? Like, you know, maybe it was much smaller or maybe even larger. Well, what we would do is instead of doing what we're currently doing, where we just send 256 byte buffer, instead we would send our data like this. We would first send a four byte unsigned integer. So what we could do is we could send a four byte in unsigned integer containing the buffer size, and then we could send the buffer. This way, if our buffer is only one byte, we'll end up sending four plus one, five bytes. And this will also, of course, support uh, sending strings larger than 256 bytes. So let's change our setup a bit for this. First off, I'm going to make a string to store our buffer. I'm going to uh, take out the condition checking in the while loop and just break out if something doesn't work right, because we'll have to have two sends here. So we'll say while true, and first we want to try to send the buffer size. So what we will do is we will create an unsigned integer, and I'm using an integer that takes up four bytes, which is 32 bits. We'll call this buffer size. We'll set it equal to buffer.size. Now we want to send this integer. Before we actually send this integer, we need to make sure that we convert it from host byte order to network byte order, because since it's an integer, we have to take the endianness into account. So what we'll do is we'll convert it right here before we send it. And we are converting a four byte integer, which is a long, so we're using host to network long, and we're converting it from host to network byte order before we send it. And this way it will be in network byte order when we send it uh, across the stream. After we try to send that, we'll see if result was successful. And if it wasn't successful, we will break out. And now we need to try to send our buffer. So what we will do is we will pass in the pointer to where our buffer starts, which we can get that with the data function on the string class. And now we need to pass in the size of our buffer. So we can get that with buffer.size. Now in case it's not clear why I'm using the size function from the string class here instead of our buffer size variable, it's because after we convert it from host to network byte order, we can't guarantee that it's in the uh, right format for our specific machine. So if we wanted to use buffer size right here, we would have to convert it back. So we would have to do something like this before we could use buffer size for this argument. And of course, I don't want another unnecessary line of code, so I'm not going to do that. Next, let's just set some text for our buffer. And now let's go and modify the server's code. So the first thing we'll do is we will change it from a char uh, array to a string. And also, I didn't realize this when I had made the previous tutorial, but this while loop is not actually, like this while condition would never be checked because if result is not success, we're breaking out right here. So we would never come back up here and have this happen. So I'm just going to set this to while true and rely on our results to break out. First, we need an unsigned integer to store our buffer size. 
and we are going to receive into this variable. Once we get to this line of code, we should have our buffer size loaded in, but we need to convert it from network byte order to host byte order in order to use it. So now we have it in host byte order and we are ready to receive our strings buffer. So we will do another receive all, and this time we want to copy the data starting at the first character of the string. But before we can do that, we have to resize the string to be able to fit the data. So we will resize that to the size of buffer size. And now when we receive it, we're just going to start copying at the very first character of the string. So we'll pass in that address. And then for the number of bytes we're receiving, we will use buffer size. After we receive that string, I'm also going to print out the number of bytes that the string was before I print out the string. So let's give this a test. I'm going to run the server. And now I'm going to run the client. And you'll see what we get is we get hello world from client and we get that it's only 24 bytes. So that appears to be working correctly. And this seems fine and everything, but there's one giant problem here. And that is that we are not doing any sanity checks when we try to receive this data on the server. Now the client could have either programmer error or maybe somebody has a hacked client or they wrote a hack to, you know, manipulate the packets, whatever. But we shouldn't just trust that the buffer size that comes in here makes sense. For example, if they sent the maximum value for an unsigned integer, that could be a four gigabyte buffer and our server could crash trying to allocate that. So we need to determine a max size that we will allow for our packets. I'm going to use eight kilobytes. So I'm going to create a new header file inside of our peanut library and I'll call this constants. We will have a global variable for our max packet size and we will have that be eight kilobytes. Now inside of our socket header, we're going to include this constants header. Now that we have the constants header included in socket, inside of our server source, what we could do is before we resize the buffer, we could verify that the size makes sense. We'll basically say, if the buffer size is greater than our max packet size, then we'll break out and we'll close the connection. And just to test this, I'll go into the client and we'll just generate something that's big enough for this. So we'll do buffer, we'll do one byte bigger than the max packet size. And we're just going to set all of those characters to the letter A when we send it. So let's run the server. Now let's run the client. You know, see, we got new connection accepted, and then we got on to press any key to continue because when the client tried to send that data, the server said, hey, that packet's too big, and it broke out of the while loop and then closed the socket. In the next video, we are going to begin creating our packet class, which will allow us to easily insert and extract data to and from a packet before we send it over the stream.